Hey guys, and welcome back to On Tier Talk, the podcast that only exists so I could give Ajad another badge. I'm Megazard, and uh, Ajad, how does it feel having that other badge? It feels incredible. I feel like my EP has grown an extra three inches. Great, so it was all worth it. And uh, Definitely, definitely. All right, 100%. Well, speaking of worth it, we got two guests. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Because I ain't doing it for you. Yeah, hi, I'm Spex. I've been on here before. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> TJ, hello? TJ. I'm TJ, I've been on here before. It feels good to be here. You, you, you should probably, like, come a little closer to your mic. Five feet away is not optimal recording distance. It was good to be back. I'm TJ. <laughs> T- uh, that's better. Down your throat is much better than five feet. No, that no, that sounded fine. I think on the yeah. it, okay. it, it does. It doesn't matter. Literally anything is better than last time. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we have a specific thing we want to do where we talk about um, just cool things that you might not have tried. We did this once before. Everyone loved it. It was super popular. I made lots of money and got lots of girls. Um, but. Before that, we were talking before the podcast, and we all had like strong opinions on a particular post um, that I just wanted to briefly touch on. So if you go to the PU Viability Rankings, and uh, I'm actually going to leave myself a note to link this in the description. There's a post about how we should drop Radicate Alola because it misses things. And this is actually something um, that I tried Nami like twice months ago and got pushed back on like if you don't miss things then it, it is where it belongs um now the post itself i mean i was talking about with specs but how, how what was you you put it in a particular way i liked um there wasn't a lot of substance to it it was kind of just repeating an argument we've like that's been ongoing since the beginning of sun mode of it missing things and it sucks because of it yeah um, I think it's important to note um, that missing things or like the, the chance of missing things, to me at least, isn't the most credible argument just because there have been loads of viable, not viable, like ridiculously strong Pokemon in the past that have, um, you know, had their main stab or whatever, uh, had the opportunity to miss. Like the, the thing that sticks out in my head, like with the most, like the most vivid thing that I have is... Um, or as NU Tauros. Um, you know, the only stab it had then was a uh, rock climb that could, uh, yeah, basically just rock climb. Rock climb on double edge, and because you want to use life orb sheer force, you only had like that 85% accurate rock climb. Um, and it still didn't stop it from being like S rank in or as NU for, for, a large, for a large portion of the metagame. So, that's, in my opinion, that's true. Me, I mean, there's Tauros, and I think just real quick, Durant is also the other big thing. Oh, yeah, Durant for sure. Was that an ORS? Are you? Yeah, I mean, Durant has been good for several generations of RU. Um, actually, was Durant banned? Yeah, it's in RUBL, yeah. They banned it to a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was playing or- I was playing ORS RU when it was uh, when it was a thing, so... Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, it, was, that's else. It, it ran ORS RU, I think, along with, like, Molest all and whatever. But, like, I, I agree with that, but here's the thing. Tauros is like if you go past the accuracy, it's ridiculously good. Same thing, like even Lilligant, if you go past like sleep being really unreliable for it, it is really good. Whereas if you get past that with Radicate, it's not crazy good. I don't know that its viability really overcomes the accuracy problem. And like here's something that banded Alolan Rat is in theory like just as good as Stoutland. It's not like you, you can't spam thing, things as easily as you can spam Scrappy Return, but you're stronger and you have Knock and Sucker and Pursuit and U-Turn and you know cool moves like that. Um, and why don't we like it? Because like it's just not consistent enough to keep putting on teams. So while I, I don't think just the individual example of, oh, I missed a move and I hate this mod, I'm going to rant about how it sucks, I, I think there's something to be said there about, like, it really isn't something that you use a lot. It is unreliable. 
And I think that should genuinely count against it, regardless of the post that I know people are going to write off for good reason. Um, yeah. This mon is a... I think um, something that also stuck to my head, and when I was hearing the entire argument of uh, Choice Banded, Raticate versus Choice Banded, Absol versus Choice Banded, uh, well, I added onto that in my head, uh, Choice Banded Skun Tank, and mm-hmm. what makes Choice Banded Skun Tank a, uh, a more appetizing Pokemon than uh, a Lolan Rat, where, and I was thinking about it for quite a while, I was saying, okay, so if that's the case with a Lolan Rat, people love a Lolan Rat, uh, people hate a Lolan Rat, sorry, but people, you know, people swear by Skun Tank in the same, you know, with the same strength. I'm thinking... With a Skun Tank, you get a lot more defensive utility as well. Um, and I feel like you can trade off a lot of the power as long as it can do something else and be more consistent across a load of matchups. Um, a load and rat, I think the reason why it struggles to fit on a ton of teams is because there's no real type of team where you can fit it on and you know it does work on that tile or on that style. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. I agree with that. Like, um, hmm. I don't know. I just look at it from like, a, yeah, yeah, go on. Go on. I was thinking, if you look at it from a pure uh, wall breaking stature, um, Raticate is better than Absol, and then Absol is better than Skun Tank. But the usage and the viability is reversed. So power doesn't necessarily correlate to meta viability or. Uh, um, usefulness in terms of the team builder. I, I completely okay. agree with that. Um, I think that we've already kind of, we already know that it misses moves and it's unreliable, but the power, I I said in my post, let me bring it up, the, uh, the risk for reward is in Raticate's favor, but I'll just add this on here, because of the risk, it's lower on the VR. It, it can be unreliable. If it had 100% accurate moves, let's just say it still got the hustle boost, um, I think it would be like easily an A mod. I I don't I don't see it that way though. Oh wow! I uh, think, but I think we've already compensated for the fact that it misses. I think we've and, uh, maybe compensated like me. I think it'd still be like a B plus or A minus mod at the best. It still struggles with the wall breaking identity that so many mons have right now which is like we have a lot of incredibly strong like amazing wall breakers just from s to a and to use any one wall breaker has to me really become like a why why this one over anything else i think every single wall breaker st- struggles from this identity even the best ones like jealous and Nagron. and i think radicate just has less reason to be used because even if you are um going to be hitting things it's really not got a lot of like other utility outside of just wall breaking like it's not it doesn't really check any specific type or in the priority its priority is really not that great you know yeah, I don't know. Uh, I agree that like there's not a lot, a lot of reasons to use it, but it just hits so so damn hard, and the dual stab is so nice. I agree, it doesn't um, it doesn't like check a specific type because its defenses are awful. But um, I don't know. I think we've already compensated for it, and B plus is I think a I think a fair spot for it at the moment. I mean, somebody say, somebody can make a yeah. post about it and prove me wrong, but. Yeah, I'd say with a lowland rat, it kind of feels like a. Um, it kind of feels like a Dodrio, you know. I I, I don't know if you get yeah. that comparison, but yeah. like I feel like the best set for uh, for a lowland rat at the moment is the uh, the swords dance set or a choice banded set, but mainly I'd say the choice the swords dance set um, because you have that dual stab and you have the knockoff and you have the Z the Z dead, so you don't have to take recoil. But I'd say the thing with it is that on paper, a lowland rat does a ton of work versus the majority of teams in the meta. But in practice, the things that it's supposed to be able to break on, like Mesprit, 
don't really have any fear of it. And all of this, and there's so much stuff in the meta that can check it. Just like Toby Amaro, Primate, Mark from Gerda, Mark from Hitmonchan. There's literally a like literally every Pokemon in the meta checks a Lolan Rat in some form. Um, I feel like that's where it mainly struggles from. Yeah, that I, I agree. It's not. It doesn't find itself in a position where I can clearly define why I want to use it. And to be in and every other mon that's really inaccurate, I know exactly why. I want to try to use a Lilligant, or I try to I want to use a Sensu with just Hurricane. I know exactly why and what they do and how they can still be effective. That's not the case for a Lolan Rat. Um, yeah. and it is the accuracy that's the thing. Maybe maybe I just don't see a reason for it to move down. I feel like I don't know, it's just kind of pointing out the obvious to me, you know what I mean? Um, I I don't think it not doing the greatest in this meta is a reason for it to move down. I mean, oh, I don't was... think it did that great in, like, on the other metas, but it was still, like, it's a, still a scary wall breaker on paper. I think it probably could have, in retrospect, moved down then too, but we just didn't. In past PU metas, I think we've been more reticent to drop things just because they've fallen out of flavor but are still overall good. I think if you look at it, like the larger scheme of things, A, B plus to B, really not that huge of a difference. And B, we should really be, uh, we should be more willing to change things based on meta trends. It's something I've privately tried to argue a lot in a council that we should be more willing to shift stuff around whereas people don't like to change stuff. Uh, I was the one who put girder A plus to A on the slate for this round, I still 100% stand by the fact that Girder should have dropped. A, a plus is really huge and filled with mons that um, are at least right now like really in that really in at the moment. Whereas Girder is still amazing. A is still really good. But it's not quite as top tier. Or if you look at other things, I think Drampa should have dropped months and months ago, and people really did not want to uh, mess with Drampa at all. It's clearly not where it used to be, but because Drampa had those highs, people didn't want to drop it. I, I would have dropped Drampa for the last like eight or nine consecutive VR shifts or something. I don't know. And Alolan Rat suffers. Even though we got Jellicent, which I guess is like a big thing that it doesn't really mind so much, like Alolan Persian is really good right now, and that uh, discourages you from using it. So are Stoutland, Dodrio, Kangaskhan, these uh, other normal types. Um, the need for physically fat things is at an all-time high, d despite Girder not being as useful. I swear that's not contradictory. Um so you have a lot more, you know, helmets and quillfish and agron and mudsdale and whatever. Uh, I, I think we should be more willing to change things because of flavor. Um, I mean, that really is why Swan. Think, that's really why Swana dropped. I don't think Swana is any worse, but it has dropped off significantly in the last uh, couple months, and uh, it really is flavor, and it's fair to reflect that. I mean, did you really think we'd see right now in the same rank we have? The, the random Kuno and Pom Pom in the same rank as Scyther, Swana, and Sensu. Like, all these disparate flying types. That's flavor. Mm, I was thinking, um, if you go back to when you used the example of Drampa, um, you go back to the time when Drampa was the big, the big dog, um, so to speak. Um, do you think that instead of it being overrated at the time and then it has to be moved back when the flavor sort of died off that it should have been ranked a lot higher at the time and then dropped off a lot lower i think we could also stand to move things up a little faster that's what we've done with some things we started to see more uh rises like roselia went from c plus all the way up to b i think that's better um like crab abominable we rate we had to raise it like three times in a row that's just not we don't need to do that um, I don't know that Drampa really need to go quite so. I think Drampa probably went up as high as it should have back then. I I'm not, I don't quite yeah. remember where it got to. But yeah, I think it should go it's both ways. It should go both ways yeah. for sure. I mean, we, we rose a Bomba Snow. Oh, no, that was only one sub rank. Um, 
We were a silvery dragon in two or three sub ranks. There are things, and I definitely think that should also happen more. But it's more prevalent with drops because I think we've been very reluctant to drop anything, and um, that's why if you look at VR right now, A plus and A minus are both huge. And we could have dropped Swana further. We could have dropped Spare Tomb further. We could drop um, Primeape. Is really a, Primeape? I think could definitely go to B plus. That's crazy. Like That's I know insane. Primeape used to be great. It used to be like the strongest A plus mom. But I think putting Primeape next to uh, next to uh, Alolan Raichu and next to Obama Snow and next to Altaria, I think it has become. A solid pick, but not one that's like considered splashable anymore. It is weird to fit that mon on a team. You cannot. Yeah. Its moves have become so much less safe in so many ways. Like Prime Ape is not it, that good. Like holy. It, it's just hard. It's hard to sort of think with Prime Ape because if you look at how the meta has developed recently, and even before when we had Power on Kingler. It used it used to be and it still is, and it recently changed such that every Pokemon on the team needed to do something for the team defensively. It didn't necessarily matter what, but it had to do something, right? And if you wanted to build a team that could afford for a mon that was frail and did nothing defensively, you had to build the sole like purpose of that Pokemon in your head. So it's almost like building with Zangus, for example. The only utility that you really get out of a, a primate is the fact that it's, you know, a good speed control and a good cleaner. But you know, that's not really worth much in uh, in this meta. Oh, that so, reminds me, Zangus is a mon I've asked to drop multiple times, and people haven't uh, gone with the nom in, in the same exact way. That no, it's probably not bad, but it's clearly not. Like, um, Katad actually just made a new post while we were talking, suggesting we uh, drop Zangus down to B minus. I think I'm fine with that. Kidding. Oh my god, That's I'm fine crazy. with that. I'm fine with that. Yes, That's it is. Uh... Yeah, it's it's like, well, okay, uh, no, actually, never mind. I think we could leave Zangus in uh, in B. Okay. That's that's not fair, but it took a while for Zangus to get down to B. If you remember, it stayed in a B plus or A minus for, for so long. That's that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think the thing is that when people think about uh, metagame development, I think uh, people will be quick to rise things up or gas things up. Um, but quick to or reluctant, more reluctant to drop things down. I think that's just how VR inflation works almost. So I think the only way that we've managed to like make it so that there's more of a the VR is more representative in quotation marks of like the current flavor of the meta um, is if we we have like almost a set amount of changes that we have to do to the VR and we make the most appropriate ones each time. Yeah, no, I think that's... I, I don't know about a set amount of changes, but maybe if we thought more realistically, not just about on, on its own, do I think this mon should rise or fall, but considering all the changes we're going to do. Because right now we just do a voting sheet. But what we used to do with VR is that like we would physically copy the VR into a pirate pad and then just move stuff around and see like okay based on other changes do I think this is okay? Because uh, like A minus is the biggest example of something that changed significantly this last. Uh, it lost uh, Altaria and maybe something else unknown. And A minus gained uh, Kuno and Pom Pom and Sensu and Primeape and Scyther, and Spiritomb, and Swana, they all went into A-, minus. and uh, on its own, based on the previous VR, yeah, they could pro probably be in A-, minus. but now, given where A- minus is at, um, I'm not sure I would have done everything the same, I probably would have dropped Spiritomb again, again, because, like, Spiritomb, great mon, but, like, not 
uh, something that you, there's really as much of a reason to use anymore as a pursuit trap, or it really struggles with the fact that the two best ghosts now like can give it some strong headaches with the Frostlass and Jellicent, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I probably would have dropped a Lowland Doug trio, uh, which totally deserved to be a minus in. Uh, and earlier, and it's still a pretty annoying stall breaker with the sub toxic. But now, when you got like Articuno and stuff in that same rank, it's feeling a little off. Um, so yeah, we could probably think about that more. Uh, I'd be interested to know what you guys think of as like people who aren't in the council and getting to think about it. What do you think, TJ? I was, I was talking to Specs about this. Uh, I think last night, and we're kind of. Uh... Can't hear you at all. Uh, kind of shocked that Articuno rose to A minus. Uh, he, he said, I'm, I don't, I genuinely have no idea if people are going to be able to hear you. You were louder earlier. Uh, he said he was shocked. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, that's better. Um, I was talking to Specs about the VR shift last night, and we were kind of shocked that Articuno rose to A minus because we haven't really seen it around like outside of like stall team then like I, I read your post and it was like it kind of benefits from like spikes and all that did i say it benefits from spikes i know i was tired but that's that's not why it read it rose yeah it, stall teams are the big thing but stall teams are a big thing articuno like stall has gone from nothing like pretty much only zugubu is this to a huge deal and uh, Articuno has been seen on a ton of teams because it has amazing uh, utility on making stall as good as what it is. I, I think that's kind of important. Uh, there are other stall mons that don't make stall. Cl stall isn't made by Clefairy. Articuno like really does a lot for stall. And uh, I think it should be considered an A- minus pick. And I think stall in, in bulky playstyles in general uh, are going to get worse in the future. Uh, but have gotten a lot better at least in this current shift. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. If you if you don't think uh, if you don't think Articuno is um, is a minus worthy, have a look at Teddy use his uh, his uh, clay dolls tool team with that Articuno, and it it, it starts to make sense. Okay. Uh, um, you have a, you have like a rocker which beats uh, not a rocker defogger which beats you know the most common. Defog uh, rocker in the tier, um, and it also has you know a bunch of utility outside of that as well. It, it's you know it's I mean? a it's a genuinely good Jellison check um, as well. But I do want to say I said <laughs> I said it's notable for having a massive spike in in splashability and viability. Not not that it gets benefits from spikes. Oh okay, that's I didn't. It was late. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to add it. I want to add that. Um, no. Like is able to pressure stall like things like Clefairy, which is key for stall. And um, I've been using Frost art because at the time it used to be things like Bulky Sensu live, and like when it cared about freeze drag. Frost breath, you said. Yeah, it's or something. I don't think Frost breath is what people are using. I, I don't think it's terrible. Um, but hey, also a good example of what Articuno is doing. I think it is a part of the reason that you see leftovers frostlass kind of becoming a thing. Lefties frostlass like was a bit of a thing, but um, Articuno makes it a much bigger deal because previously you could just kind of chip away at uh, any non-lefty set kind of easily. Like you could taunt Articuno and then spike, but you're gonna kind of lose your frostlass pretty fast and they defog later. Um, it's kind of because Articuno is uh, such solid hazard control for stall in a meta where like you really need hazard control and a lot of hazard control is bad um, that Articuno does so much for it that it makes leftovers frost last better because now it, it won't lose to Articuno spamming ice beam or frost breath or whatever yeah I don't know I I was just confused by the point of uh, yeah, let me go to the actual thing um, so Alola and Sandsash, Articuno, and Roselli are particularly notable for massive spikes in splashability and viability caused by the presence of Jellicent and the resurgence, resurgence of fatter teams. I don't know. I've been, I've only been seeing like bulky offense and offense be used a lot. And I know that we've seen some like in a 
P Latitour, like some balance and uh, some. I think somebody used stall one game. Um, I think I think balance. To be clear, I don't think the resurgence of fatter teams applies to balance. I think balance is still a style that struggles a lot. Um, this is yeah. more referring to pretty much the stall and semi stall that you've seen a lot of it, which is in PU ladder tour. But I don't think yeah. that's something you should. That I, I think it's notable enough that it should be taken into account. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know if A minus is is where I would put Kuno. I mean, I don't know. I I haven't had a problem this meta with stall or anything. Like it's been pretty easy to break. Maybe I've just been using a lot of special skunk, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just wouldn't put... I, I wouldn't have put Articuno in A-. That's just me, um, though. From last night, I wouldn't have put it in A- either, but now I do understand. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you explained it a bit more, because, I don't know, the post made, it, made points, but it wasn't like... A, there wasn't, like, a lot there. So thank you for explaining it. No, yeah, it was a pretty quick post. There's a lot I probably could have gone into more, but uh, that was the same night that I did uh, all the manual tags for PU Seasonal and did the entire uh, first round of World of um, World Cup of OMs, which is like another 100-plus tags and a huge OP and a bunch of tournament matchups. And <sighs> yeah, no Don't worries. host a tour yeah. with snake draft style matchups. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. If, if everyone, if anyone ever asks you, run. <laughs> it's yeah. Um, no, but I, I think the concerns on Kuno are fair. It, it is definitely um, not a mon that I think people maybe expected to get the uh, two sub rank jump. But frankly, I think it deserves it even more than Pom Pom. I only I only voted for Pom Pom to go up to B rank or uh, B plus rank. I don't think. I think Pom Pom is better, but I think it still has like a lot of the same issues, and it kind of baffles me um, that people consider it like more strongly A minus than Articuno. I, I don't really get Pom Pom. It's not that great. What's it? What's it really doing for your team? Like it's a it's a strong flying type, but it, it kind of needs a solid matchup. Which it can get a lot, but it like really, really struggles in those games where you don't, where where you, the matchup is not there. Which can be as simple as like a well supported lantern, really just makes it a pain in the ass. Yeah, um, I find that Pom Pom needs like the perfect set and the perfect matchup to uh, completely like fuck over a team. Um, not HG to be clear, not good. that it needs to completely fuck over a team to be good. You can just like be a good mon without six owing things. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just find it it can struggle. Like if it, because there there are a lot of stops to it. Um, maybe they're not as common as they were before. Like lantern isn't seeing that much usage. Um, it's still solid, but. Um, I think a good example of pom pom strengths are in H Shad's game versus Drud, where Drud really had a hard time breaking pom pom, um, and I don't know. It just yeah. has a great defensive typing. Like the stall breaker set is really good right now. Taunt, Toxic, Roost, Rev Dance, Hurricane, whichever one you want. Um, I think it's better than Kuno right now. I think with with pom pom the the big thing about it is that it's kind of just hard to kill. Um, the, the difference between, uh, well, well, there isn't really much of a difference, but the difference between like Pom Pom now and Sensu is that it's just not as weak to a lot of things like Pursuit and, um, you know, just dark side moves in general. And I feel like it's, it's harder, harder to abuse as well. Um, it's, it's got one of those, uh, it's if uh, a pom pom sets up, it's much harder, to, I think, to revenge kill as well than a um, than a fat sense do. Um, also, given that the trio has dropped and um, or mainly just the trio, but that it's it's almost like it's a bit more valuable to teams. Like you can stick it on a team and say, okay, um, I can I can use this in a pinch to to get out of a 
uh, out of trouble versus Dodrio. Just don't let it get a sword stance up or whatever. Mm. So it's um, it's it's one of them ones. It's um, I'd say it's good because um, it has it still has all of the utility that it once had. Like it had the ability to check Lilligan in the old match. So it had the ability to check um, other stuff. Uh, other Sensu, for example, other Pom Pom, but now I feel like added adding Dodrio to that uh, sort of like utility is a uh, is really good for it. I will say another addition to the utility is that the scarf set is a genuinely worthwhile thing. Um, scarf Sensu dropped off months ago for good reason. It just has a lot of issues. Scarf Pom Pom. Mm is still inferior to Togedemaru, but has, um, but it is a worthwhile thing that, like, I, I think should be factored in. Um, it's not nearly as strong as the uh, Taunt CM sets or the Taunt Roost or the CM Roost or the whatever, but, you know, it, it's a thing. Yeah, I haven't seen, like, a Scarf or a Choreo in probably months. Really? I, I've Actually seen... Facing it, yeah. I've seen Scarf Pom Pom, like, multiple times in the past couple of weeks. Dude. A scarf that gets pursuit traps just sounds like fucking like it sounds like suicide to me at least. I mean Scarf Mesprit is still that... Scarf Mesprit is still genuinely fine. I don't know what you're talking about. The thing with Scarf Mesprit though is that outside of being a scarf it, I don't think Scarf Mesprit is an actual scarf though. It's kinda of like a pseudo scarf. Like most, what it does most yeah, is true. like trick its trick its scarf away. You turn out, you turn a bit, like switch it to a couple things, and then healing wish. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really perform like a your standard scarf in quotation marks. I mean, I was using scarf rocks, Mesprit, which I know sounds terrible because pursuit and scun tanks can be switching in, but I swear it's not like that shit. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big yeah, dude. You might as well. <laughs> Dude, you might as well drop sidekick while you're at it, honestly. Like, <laughs> you can just run a U-turn stealth rock trick hitting wish. Like, you might as well. <laughs> that actually doesn't sound it's... terrible, which makes me more mad. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, like, it's not like it, fighting's are switching I swear in here. <laughs> Real quick, uh, I, someone at some point, I, I, I mentioned Lantern, and then someone said Lantern's not all that common. Um, I actually think both Lantern and Electros are real good, and uh, one of my personal like nominations slash discussion points when I posted the update uh, was actually bumping Electros to A rank. Um, where I, I think it's genuinely worth considering placing Electros next to uh, Alolan Sandslash and Stoutland and above things like Quagsire now. Um, Electros is like really good. And I think people forget that like it's not supposed to be a defensive mon as, as a purely like offensive mon that happens to run assault best most of the time it's so weird i i i, I think electros is really that good and then i i, I have a hard time justifying it like I, I look at myself like zarg what are you doing it's clearly not but electros is good i also I think... have that uh yeah. i also have that like on it i feel like with electros though like i don't like talk about power but like it was one of those mods where i felt like people slapped on the teams and like it always was like two it ko'd by like some random special attack and like that's what it kind of feels like yeah but it's not i know it has an assault vest but that doesn't mean it's supposed to switch into jellicent because it's it, it shouldn't yeah, no, I, th I think that's a, that's a huge misconception with Electros in general. I feel like it's a Pokemon that you don't switch, you don't use to switch into things. You use it as like a, okay, I'm going to check you with Jellison, uh, not Jellison, I'm going to check you with uh, Electros now, and I'm going to Volt Switch, and I'm going to gain momentum whether you like it or not type of Pokemon. And it just uses its bulk in quotation marks to, to force the switch or force or like give you the initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people just overrated, overrated its defensive uh, capabilities in the past, I think. Um, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say they, they overrated its defensive capabilities and underrated its offensive capabilities. Yeah, because it has, like, perfect coverage. Like, it, it almost hits everything in the tier. I, I can't think of many things that it doesn't hit, at least neutrally well. 
Yeah, because like in most scenarios, what are you gonna do? You, if you if you think about the ideal electros check, you'd have something that's immune to volt switch, and that could switch into all of the or well, like can tank all the other coverage moves. But that just doesn't exist. Like you can't have a uh, a Pokemon which is a ground type or uh, Volt Absorb and then be able to switch into not Flamethrower and Giga Drain. It's just not possible. So, on I think especially on Spikes, like the Spikes meta, and uh, it's like a top, a really valid uh, choice. Yeah. Hakamolo, by the way, is the oh, most... It's not immune to Volt. I know, yeah. <laughs> Hakamolo. And like Grandpa at least doesn't get knocked off. Um, although Electros really does have multiple good options for the last slot at this point. I think you got Knock, T-Bolt is actually, like, usable now, uh, Super Power, Super Power is actually, like, fine, um, as is, a uh, Acid Spray, uh, so, you know, you, you got, you got things to think. Um, and I've definitely pondered, I, I still haven't gotten around to trying it, but non-Assault Vest, because at this point, like, like we said, it's not meant for the defensive, it's not helping with like the physical pursuit trap, so it, it might be worth looking into Ayapapa or whatever. I haven't tried it. Could be shit, who knows, but just throwing it out there. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking like I feel like it always wants to run four attacks because it wants that coverage. And it's not even like you don't even use assault vest. Like you just throw it on. You don't think like, oh, I'm gonna be the best spadef like wall in the tier. No. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like a cherry on top. Like you're running these moves anyways. You might as well run the item. It helps. Whatever. Um. Love the hell slot is kind of like unorthodox in the coil set. Pretty sure it's really bad, but like I'm pretty sure it would be bad because flamethrower, giga drain, volt switch are is is what makes it good, and uh, coil yeah. is really easy to revenge kill, and that that is not changed. And I say that confidently, having not seen anyone use coil, I can't think of as there's no way it's hard to revenge kill. Um, but like yeah, I get yeah, I mean, plus I coil. I, I think one of the reasons, that, like that's a bigger reason to get turned off by coil than shouldn't use assault vest. Like, it's so even with assault vest, I'm pretty sure you just like die to Omastar, like minimal chip things like that. Omastar, by the way, I can't, I don't know why people want to drop to A minus. I I don't get it. It's so good. Well, what is wrong with people? Omastar. Omastar wants to drop Omastar. Yeah. Why? What? Hello. Um, okay, maybe not to drop Omastar, but people have been saying in posts that, like, uh, when Uber Skiddy brought Omastar up as, like, one of the top threats that you have to think about in PU, people are like, nah, Omastar really shouldn't be up there. Um, things like that. Yeah, I, I gotta go yeah, back and look no, at the no. MP thread. I, even if they don't want to drop it, I, I don't think people are that crazy about it. And uh, I am absolutely crazy about Omastar. Holy shit, that thing is a monster. It is still a super dangerous smasher. It's still like, you have to think about when, you know, I, I want to hit it when it's setting up, but I can't use a physical move sometimes. That's a real pain in the ass. Um, Chopple and Wakan are genuinely usable. Shut up. Um, I agree with no, Chopple. I'm saying with, with the thing with Omastar is that... I'm not a huge fan of the Smash set. I think it's it's kind of just hard to fit on teams, and it's not reliable. But but I think the defensive uh, dual hazard set is insanely good. Like the ability to just run uh, two types of hazards, like SR spikes, and then I put toxic spikes on because I'm, I'm a maverick, um, is insane. Like it's so much fun, and it's it's also really hard to have like a spinner or a defogger switch into. Uh, those uh like just schooled in general like i think omastar and just in general it's sort of underplayed if that makes sense he's yeah it's almost like, like you go on tj i feel like the opposite way i feel like the smash that is pretty easy to fit on a team if you're looking for some kind of like really good like setup sweeper um yeah it's revenge killed rather easily by like priority common priority like uh 
much, yeah. It's not. But, like, you it's just not. Like, chop wood or whatever, I mean. Not, I don't, I don't think it's hard to fit on the teams. If anything, I'd say that the, the set is harder because it just kind of, not faces competition, but, like, there's other things like frost last quillfish that. Yeah, you dipped out for a bit of it, and you're saying that, like, Smash feels more easy to fit on teams. And now you're staticking. I don't know what's up with your mic. No, and it was supposed to be better. Um, but, yeah, no, I agree. I think Dual Hazards is fine, and it certainly has that niche over Frostlass and Quillfish, but Smash is should be considered on any offensive team, and I don't think it is. Um, it's a very strong set of sweeper. It, ha it checks specific things that you might be worried about, like it can tank that hit from, you know, your Dodri or whatever. Um, it forces people to really think about what moves they click because there are a lot of uh, choice mons that have to be very careful about letting it set up. Um, and it also isn't made significantly better by Z move to the point where, like, well, I can't run... You know, both Lilligant and Omastar. I can't run both Lycan Rock and Omastar. I can't run um, Alolan Executor and Omastar. It can forfeit the Z move and still function well. And uh, that is also a big thing for me, trying to run dual setup offense. Or like, like offense with more than one big setup sweeper or wall break or whatever. Um, the Z move to me feels more critical than ever. And Omastar doesn't have to have it. And that's great. Yeah. Um... Omastar is one of like the scariest mons to face because if you're in one bad position, it can just go downhill from there. If you don't have that uh that AV hitmonchan in the back, which doesn't even kill at minus one defense. Or chopping. And, uh, I I don't even think it kills at minus one defense, like even without chopping. No, but you have to have a full health Omastar, which isn't really realistic. Yeah, I it's just like. It, it's one of those mons like Dodrio where like when it's in, it almost always causes a 50-50 between setup or just throwing off a Z into a KO and something or Oko-ing it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think people are underrating it, and it almost makes it better that way for it. Uh, if people aren't prepping for it, I mean, I'll start using it more. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I really like Almastar. If the uh, if the dual hazard defensive set had like some utility like taunt or something, I would use it a lot more. But I agree, it faces a bit of competition, mm -hmm. um, just because it doesn't have that thing to break down cores. It just kind of wants to set up hazards and get out of there, tank some hits on the way. Um, it doesn't have like that wisp or that taunt. Destiny bond, dude. Yeah, I think I think destiny bond. bond is the thing that people are missing when they say Quillfish should drop from A+. Because that, that is not just Katat. There are people like, yeah, Quillfish, not quite as good anymore. Uh, Destiny Bond is the missing link. Go use it. Just just do it. Just please. It's so it's such a dumb move. It is such a stupid move. Uh, nothing should... It's, it's a broken move that nothing should ever have. It is more broken than Protect, I promise. More broken than protect. Oh my god. That's a that's a that's a bold statement. Right <laughs> protect is actually really good on Quill. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna at Keo right now and whatever server we're both in, I'm gonna tell him that Destiny Bond is more broken than protect. Uh, let's see. Yeah, very Keo. Oh, he's gonna have, he's gonna have to okay. come back on. <laughs> Hang on, Keo profile, what servers are we both in? Only Smogon and Smogon tournaments. Well, fine then we're doing it in Smogon, baby. For the world to see. Um, Keo Disney. The uh, I don't know. It it just okay. I don't know. I'll try to use the defensive set more H shed, but I just don't see it. See the thing is with the defensive set is that it's it sucks versus offense, but in a fat versus fat matchup. The ability to just go into like hard in on a Regirock, click SR and then click spikes as the Regirock switches out, is like <clears throat> that utility is so so good. And then because I run T spikes, the 
you can just click T spikes if they don't have a poison uh, a T spike absorber or they don't have a defogger, for example. Either way, you force a defog. Can you guys hear me, Mama? We can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know what's wrong with my mic. But I just realized what. Um, yeah, I wanted to add on to quote there. So I feel like any other like utility option is just better than protect, like Destiny mm -hmm. Bond. Um, I wasn't you saying protect running? Quillfish. I was making a joke about Keo thinking protect protect is a broken move. I was oh. the one who said protect Quillfish. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I really like the scouting ability with it. Um, like if <clears throat> if you have something in the back, like say Stoutland's in, you have like Agron or whatever, because um, mm -hmm. they kind of pair well together. Agron takes advantage of spikes and all that. It's just, it's such a great um, scouting tool, and especially if you're running Black Sludge, which I haven't seen a lot of lately. No, but it's genuinely really good, cool. but here's the counterpoint. Protect is just good in general because of all the choice mods, and on Quillfish specifically, it is it, it struggles from competition from the other support moves. I think in general we should see more Protect. Yeah, it should become like the option on your Mudsdale and your non-AV Lantern, your Regirock, whatever, but specifically on Quillfish, Dude, Destiny Bond is so good. Uh, it's so dumb. You can just click Taunt and Debond, and you have offensive presence even when you have no offensive presence. You know how Tejad was saying, don't run Psychic on Mesprit? I'm now thinking, why do we even need a Water-type move? Yeah. I mean, I just found it kind of weird how like people were running on like, a uh, and I haven't. I don't think I've ever clicked Liquidation or Waterfall with a uh, Quillfish like, in this recent meta. I don't think I ever have. Um, well, the reason for the dual uh, stab no, there is because you specifically. It's, uh, hey, Jad, what are you doing? It's it's one of those things where you just the support that you gain from clicking other moves, like spikes and whatever, is just not worth the twenty percent that you're gonna do to to Lilligan. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's just one of them ones. It's not that weak. Like it, it genuinely will threaten things and make it a lot more annoying to like you know if you go if you hard lantern they poison jab there is some utility to that it's not completely uh without merit so i mean yeah i just I, yeah go on tj yeah so like when cool first was like or when cool first dropped um i kind of noticed how people were just using both scald and poison jab and i thought that was just like a waste because like you probably I don't know, like at that time, I felt like Destiny Bond or like literally anything else, even T Wave, was just like better since Quillfish is so passive in general. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that it did drop during like Kingler meta, so it wanted something to at least like hit uh, Kingler, like with Poison Jab. Um, like you, you already checked it, but if they were like running SD, even that Body Slam set, that kind of got some usage back then. Looking back, it wasn't that bad, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it should go without an attack, but I do see the merit of like running maybe some more utility on it rather than protect. I just thought it was like something a little cool. It is still cool. Protect is still yeah. just genuinely good in this meta. Um, so I think that's enough on Quillfish. You guys, uh, is there anything specific you want to hit? Because otherwise we're not going to hit it. So anything cool you want to talk about it doesn't have to be like the specific mod thing that I was talking about earlier. Just anything that you feel like we should bring up since we've been talking about the meta so much. Um, let's let's talk about how we're going to stop uh, we're going to stop running our stab moves on all of our Pokemon. <laughs> Drake on Dredgy Rock for the win. <coughs> No, only utility moves. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, I think we could definitely see uh, Stablis Regirock. I, I think that could be fine. I think we could see Stablis Mudsdale. I mean, it's got it. It has to pick between all these things. Maybe we should just start dropping Earthquake. I mean, Clefairy does Stablis, so why can't anything else? Uh, let's start with Mudsdale because I feel like that was that was that was just a joke. That was just a joke. I gave Clefairy's Establish example. I mean, Clefairy is the Establish example, but that's because it runs Seismic Toss. Do you guys want to talk about metagame trends? Like, if for this, example... Give um, one specific thing, because we, we... Do you guys... So, I don't know if you know this, but we're uh, almost 50 minutes into this. 
Oh, no. <laughs> well, the specific thing is just like Roselia, like spiking up in usage and spikes being really good with like gel. Spiking up in usage? Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, do you guys want to talk about that? Um, I think, I don't, I don't mean to beat on a dead horse, but I think spikes has been good since like eight months ago or like nine months ago. It's, it's, I just think it, like different spike is now getting the limelight and, and, and Rosetti is one of them. I like that. I like Rose. Um, I think Rose is an interesting mod. It kind of follows metagame trends. It's almost like at one, like one minute it's awful and you just don't see it ever. And the next, like, it's it's pretty solid. I kind of like it in this meta. Yeah. Um, we used it in ladder tour. It was some spread. I don't know. It even took on like defensive mess spread. It was a. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was like the standard one with like twenty four speed and then the rest of it. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's interesting, especially when you pair it with things like Jellison. You just makes it kind of hard to read. Uh, you, you don't have like default. Like, Sorry, I think my mic is better now. <laughs> I think it's like really good when you just pair it with things like Jellison, like King of Um, yeah, that's what I've been seeing recently. Yeah, um, I, I, I gotta say, I'm, yeah, just, I'm a little bit lukewarm on Roselia, and I, I, I'd hesitate saying things like really good. I think it's fine. I think it's a solid. Mon that yeah, is I don't, I don't good. think it'll ever be like a top tier mon this gen. It just can't keep up with like all the power creep. But its defensive like its defensive capabilities are really appreciated in some metas, and I feel like this is one of them. Yeah. Again, like it's not like really good, but it's I think it's a usable spiker. Um, yeah, the recovery is really nice. I'd say the big the big. Detriment, I'd say to Roselia is just that he gets pursuit trap by um, by Scun Tank, and then if he gets pursuit trap by Scun Tank, you're not a Roselia check, you're not a, uh, a Jason check anymore, and it's it just kind of spirals out of control from there. But if you manage to keep it free of Scun Tank, or you manage to you know appropriately kill Scun Tank before you manage to bring it in, if that makes sense, um, that would. That would be that. That's the ideal operating window for Rosé to work in. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of sucks because uh, a Lola Slash just comes in and spins on it, and especially because a Lola Slash has like, I'd say probably the single-handed, single biggest roll compression in the whole tier. Like SR spin Aurora resist is is pretty nuts. Well, you could probably slap normal resist onto that as well. Um, a little bit, sort of. Like it, at least it checks. Just, yeah. Mini, mini, mini normal resist. So, yeah, it's like, it's got, that's obviously going to spike in usage as well, so. Yeah, but like, I, I mean, sure, Roselia has the struggles, it does things, it's a B-rank mon, I, I think that's fine, I, I have no problem with it going up to B. Uh, it, it's in the same rank as Lorantis, I think that's fair, it's in the same rank as Tangela, I think that's fair, they're like solid and they do specific things and they don't fit on every team and they have clearly defined flaws uh i just have a hard time calling it rose hype like it, this is a big bump for rose this is a big spike in usage but i still can't see it rising higher because it is only it is only going from like irrelevant to fine yeah, yeah i just fine. i just think more people should check it out um i feel like it's it still kind of has a stigma around it of being like a bad ladder kind of noob trap mon um not even a noob trap but i feel like people should i don't know check it out more see if it fits on your kind of teams it's something to consider at least um yeah using uh yeah, the... anything anything else tj you had rose specs you're you're the guest this is your turn is there anything you thought we should talk about when we're talking about the meta and trends and all that Meta and trends. Yo, that car. That's scary. <laughs> um, I think Clefairy is really bad. Like, uh, yeah. I think Clefairy could move down. Yeah, that's probably going to happen. Minus. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've i tried using it, man. I love Clefairy, but it's... Uh, it just gets pressured out so much. Yeah, and, and when we say really bad, again, it, it's, not, it's not like 
horrendous. Com- compared to how it... Like, it'd it's still be like A minus, maybe even B plus, but I think that'd be too yeah. low. Um, but yeah, like, it, when Jellicent is now the big special mod, like, at least Clefairy was not a perfect switch into Aurorus, but he could kind of do it. Uh, you can't come into Water Spout, and that kind of sucks. That's definitely I mean, a little pain. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, I think I think Clefairy is a fine, fine quotation marks uh, check to um, check to what's it called? I've, I've lost the word. Aurorus, Jellicent. That's the thing. Jellicent. That was the one. I think it just needs a a secondary resist. You can't just depend on it as as oh, your for one sure. and only Jellicent yeah. thing. But it still can do a job because you still can switch into Hydro Pump. You still can switch into Shadow Ball uh, quite easily. Uh, yeah. It just it just gets a bit tricky when you're talking about max HP Water Spout and uh, Trick. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Maybe I'm just using it like completely wrong. But uh, I was so used to just using it to check like when Scarf Pyro was like a big set and all that. I don't know. It just it doesn't do the things that it wants to do anymore reliably which was kind of a big thing for it being so high on the vr um and i, I feel still like think, i think tons of matchups just give it issues oh, well here's my, the thing my problem. yeah go on. all right let me hit this real quick clefairy is primarily like the special blanket uh, there are certain special mods that doesn't take on, but like the, the the flip side of that is it still had better physical utility in past metas. You can't really pursue Trap Clefairy. You can just force it out with the darks, and uh, it would it was generally like fine at taking on Primeape and Girder and Hitmonchan uh, and th- th- I spare to my guess not that's not really a strong mon, but you had like genuine genuine. Genuine, genuine utility is like a check to some of the more common physical mons. Now that is really just not the case. The most common things that hit, uh, that have any kind of mixture of physically attacking capabilities, really kind of just get bop it in the face, and that's no fun. It is Reggie Rock, and then <laughs> Girder still, I guess, but yeah, it, it's not a fun time for it. Yeah, so I think I. I think it should go down to A minus um, in the future, but I could be wrong. Maybe some magic will happen and it'll be good again. But I just don't see I don't that know. happening. I think it's still like a decent mod. Yeah, it's probably fine for right now. But just yeah, because like a blanket checks so many like things. I mean, yeah. But does it really? But does it really blanket check that much anymore? Well, okay. I think if you like, all right. I'm looking at VR right now, and it blanket checks things like Aurorus, uh, Will again, like to an extent, if like they don't get lucky with Sleep Powder. Um, it is not a great check to Aurorus. It is not a great check to Lilligant. It is not a great check to Jellicent or Electros or you know all these things. Like they end up being kind of conditional. And that's why, like, it is kind of a blanket check, but it's not as good of a blanket check anymore. Yeah. I mean, Alolan Executor is really the first thing going down where I'm like, yeah, you, you are genuinely good Alolan Executor check. When I ran physical, uh, not physical, mixed with Z Woodhammer, no one else does that. And yeah, for good reason, that's, <laughs> that's, that set's not great. It, I mean, it's fine, especially for, like, a counter team ish thing, but it, it, and it still works, like, Similar to standard Alolan Executor, but it's not great. It's yeah. not really a thing. The best like, thing that I was going for it is checking Jellicent and Mesprit. And even Jellicent gives it some troubles. Um, wait, I don't what, know. Go, je- wait, are you talking about Clef? Checking yeah, Jellicent? Clef checking Jellicent and Mesprit. Yeah, like it, it takes the heads. Yeah, but like the thing about Jellicent is I think people are running trip as like a filler. People are running trick, or... and that sucks to get tricked. It also sucks that like you can't do a ton back. You're kind of forced to recover. You gotta like toxic it or T wave it, or maybe you're running Moonblast, but seismic toss is still like the better move. Although obviously like hitting frost last is something, but like it, yeah. it it does also struggle in picking moves. I think T wave and toxic, you, you kind of need one of those. You need soft boiled. You want both attacks. You want rocks. You know, you'd like the dual status. That you'd like calm mind. You sometimes want HP ground. 
That's a good Dude, dude, honestly, dude. I'm gonna be honest. Dude, I ran I ran HP fighting to hit a Lowland Sand Slash, and then I hit a Spadef a Lowland Sand Slash. Guess how much damage I did? 35. 30, 20, yeah. 20, like 20. 37%. How does it do 37%? I was so disappointed. I actually deleted the team after. Like, I, could, I couldn't because handle it. Because it had a 60 Spatag. Okay. On that... Four times... On that amazing note... On that amazing note, um, I think we should probably call it it. It's been an hour. Uh, we had plans to talk about other things, but... The PU meta is just really interesting, so you know it's sue us. PU, PU is just, it, it's not my fault that PU is such a good tier. I'm just the tier leader. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all for showing up. You guys could uh, sub to Specs, I suppose. He uploads things. They're fun. Um, don't sub to me. Just just wait till I post on tier talk in the hub. <laughs> or do. I really don't care. This channel's not monetized. Um, yes. Yet. <laughs> All right. Any last words? Um, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That was a good last word. We'll see y'all next time.